Good morning. Welcome back to Modern Pop Thrift. My name is Tom. I'm a full-time eBay reseller and I have five kids that I stay at home for. Um, I don't stay home with them a lot anymore except for Evelyn because they're in school. Um, anyway, sold some hats. 11 90 something. This one is made in the U.S. Underneath the sweatband on these 5950s, you can find where it's made. The made in the U.S. ones are way better. And this one only sold for 1190 because the fitted hats don't do as well as snapback hats. Vintage Pepsi sold for like 14 plus shipping. Oh, uh, sold these Red Wings. I picked them up for like $7. They're hard toe and not a steel toe, just kind of a, a uh, casual boot shoe. And then these from the Ollie's pickup right before Christmas sold. This is uh, Luca's friend, Alberto, and then Luca. And I paid $10 a piece for these, right? $9.99, that might look backwards to you, but they're, uh, so I'm 20 bucks in, but the buyer's all in for 50. So, or the buyer paid 50. I think it was probably free shipping, but that's a pretty good flip for retail arbitrage. And obviously I'm going to remove those price tags with a heat gun before I ship those out. So the other day, a buddy texted me and said, Hey, the Eagles just made the Super Bowl. So if you have any Eagles stuff, you should make sure it's listed now or refreshed or whatever. And I happen to have this children's jersey from a quarterback in the 80s who evidently is a legend. Um, I was going to list it for like 20 bucks. I looked at comps. They were like 30. So I listed it for 35 thinking I could probably capitalize on the uh, uh, excitement about the Eagles making the Super Bowl. So uh, that sold. And then I bought both of these Dale Earnhardt shirts for uh a dollar a piece and the comps weren't very good so i just lotted them together sold them cheap found this the other day for like 350 at goodwill it's new i'd never heard of the orca brand before but it's new and it feels like quality so i checked it out i ended up selling in a couple weeks for 31 dollars turvis 24 ounce i paid like a dollar and 15 cents for it used cleaned it up Sold for uh, quite a bit of money, um, and I've only had it like a week or two. The other wool sweater, the blue one just sold the other day. These are uh, the Wooly Pulley. Um, these are like military looking wool sweaters, British. Um, this one sold for 20 bucks. The other one sold for like 17 and I paid five bucks a piece for them. I picked up this cardigan the other day for five bucks. It sold for $26.99. That was the day that Le I think it was the day Levi picked up all that um, Fiesta wear. So it's been like a week, week and a half ago. $1.50 into $19 free shipping when they go media mail is a really good flip. And these had comps for... Like the solds were, there was a sold that was like $29, but it was like a year ago. And then the listeds were like 35 and 50. So I came in at 19 or I came in at $22.99, I think. And somebody sent me a $19 offer. So that worked out undercutting the market. Somebody said something about, we need to watch out for um, the race to the bottom. And I think that's a flawed concept. Like, I am not massively affecting the price of this book because I sold one. I'm making me money. I'm affecting the algorithm for eBay and my conversion rate for me. But the, the, the idea that the sales velocity is going to hiccup or even fall because I sold one below market is like I, I sold one and I, everything I sell is something I sell one of. I, I very, very few times do I pick up multiples of the same item at the same time. 
less frequently do I find something twice. And so most of what I'm selling is used. Most of what I'm selling is one-off stuff that I'll never find again. So I'm not, I don't believe that I'm negatively affecting the market by underpricing the market. I'm getting one person a good deal and selling one item and I'm making money. But the race to the bottom, let's all not price things low because we, the market on that item, like, I just, I don't hold the market sacred. I don't think that we can look at uh, the market or we can look at used things that are mass produced and try. It doesn't do me any good to protect the market. It does me good to sell it as sell it for profit and sell as many things for profit as I can. And if I race to the bottom, I'm taking one step in the race and then everybody else can be racing, but I take one step. I make money. I, I think that the race to the bottom, it could be something on Amazon where you have 40 of an item and a couple of people are trying to make sure they sell out first on an item that is like seasonal and discontinued and limited. Like, But the idea that we're going to race to the bottom on a single listing one-off used item is misguided. So I don't, um, I don't worry about racing to the bottom. I worry about turning a legitimate profit on the one-off items that I get one at a time. And I, my 10 to 15 items a day has no measure on the actual market. I just don't believe that, that I'm a big enough deal to affect the market. If I was selling those for pennies, I don't think it would affect the market. So if somebody sees my one step and they adjust their price on those books because they saw that I sold them for lower, um, then I the next time I find those Sarah books, the market will either adjust or was inflated to start with. So I don't worry about it. I, I price things where I know they will move quickly and where I make a profit. And everybody else can adjust to the market the way that they see fit. But I don't believe that I'm denigrating a market by selling one item below the standardized price. And I don't believe that it affects my business in a negative way because I don't sell the same item twice almost ever. I got this in that lot of Lego stuff and used Google Lens and the Tommy 11 number on there to figure out that he rides a four-wheeler and when the four-wheeler wrecks into something, he pops off. So how many of these do you think are lost? And somebody's got one, but no dude. And this sold for $6 plus shipping for a toy, for part of a toy. Toy parts can be really good. And this was only listed for three or four days. So you notice that Evelyn and I were out shopping all day yesterday and so I didn't get any shipping done. So this is the sales for Tuesday and Wednesday. And now it is about 930 in the morning on Wednesday. And I'm going to take this stuff and ship it. Take this stuff and ship it. Well, Johnny Paycheck, kind of. <laughs> Be better. Shipped me GoPro battery parts in a poly bag full of packing peanuts. It probably didn't get damaged, but that is piss poor is what that is. I hate packing peanuts. I hate them. I think they are gross and they're messy and I hate them. So it is February uh, 2nd. It's, that's not the one baby, uh, Groundhog's Day. And that means that the estate sale companies have started having estate sales again. They stop the, there are three or four major estate sale companies. All of them take January off. Maybe that's everywhere. That's definitely here. So today is the first sale, not thrift store or retail arbitrage or auction of the year. First sale, estate sale. Let's go see if we can do something fun. First find some Nike Mojo golf balls are good. I'll probably grab all of them because I'll be cheap. And a big old garbage bag full of hats. Let's see what's here. 
used to be yep that's for your fingernails mommy could show you how to use that she has one these are two bucks a piece so if they're not worth flipping they're worth using i mean not that i do a lot of shaving but i do some Whoa. I want to see. I want to show you. This is the coolest. That's the coolest? Yeah. You're the coolest. One more room to search in. The one that I always said hi to the way. Are you buying that baby? Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're buying a baby. We might have to. So this is, I paid $2 a piece for these shoe boxes. Let's see what's here. This is good. I mean, this is tape that we can use. This, I suspect, would probably have some resale value. Swing line, hand stapler, tot. You're going to ship the Evy size shirt? Okay, so that's probably resale. But a bunch of this stuff is going to be for personal, too. And then a bunch of it's going to be nothing. Edward Jones. That's probably nothing. I'm going to look it up first. Envelopes. I don't know what I'm looking at. $4 for a full box, but she ended up selling them to me for two bucks a piece. Uh, so then these are just uh, envelopes, nothing exciting. Ooh, unopened scotch uh, paper clips. Is that what that is? Oh, it's a one roll of tape. So we're keeping the tape. And Evelyn evidently is keeping the highlighters. No, I'm not. I'm going to dig around and see if I find anything good in the first box, and I'll report, and then we'll do the second box. Because you don't need to see every pencil, I don't think. The okay, so this is a bunch of highlighters and pens and random, the kind of things that you expect to find in a box of stationery that is worth having around for two bucks. Like... This roll of tape all by itself is worth two bucks. And so that I paid two dollars for all of that stuff. Post-its, stuff. Daddy, you put the water in here? You put water in there and then you use them to lick envelopes. So you don't use your tongue to lick envelopes. So that's a fun box. And then there was some stuff that I don't know if it has value. I'll put comps up if it does. If it doesn't, I'll just put an X on the screen or something. But uh, this is the stuff. Like a bank rulers and a letter opener from the American Business Women's Association and envelopes that'll get donate the little stuff and recycle the paper. I don't need any of that. I, I don't know what Kong's Kong's Clyde is, so I'm gonna look into this because it's nifty. It might be nothing. This is a swing line box. I suspect that it's for this top five of or this top 50. Um, Cause it's too small for this. But those two staplers, the big metal tot, and here's the swing line tot 50. This is nothing. They will later. This I believe is a cross brand pen. No, it's not. It's a quill brand pen. This one is a cross yeah, brand pen. Here. And if you run across quality old pens and pencils like these, cross brand pens can be good. I don't know if these are good ones, but they are uh, worth looking into. These are old mechanical pencils by Bic, and they say they're made in France on them. So I'm gonna look at them. Stationary stuff can be collectible, it's kinda nuts. This one is a really old mechanical pencil made in Japan. B17. Uh, this, I think, might have been my favorite thing. This is a Nike pencil sharpener, but it is very vintage. And it's probably not something you see a lot. And then these are little Revlon 
scissors it. that probably aren't worth anything, but I wasn't going to throw them out until I find out for sure. So we're on to box number two. I suspect there's less keep randomness and more sell stuff in here. Three unused tapes. I don't know. These are new old stock. They're definitely worth keeping if they're not worth selling. I suspect they're worth 10 bucks for all three of them. If they're not, then we'll just keep them because we use tape. Believe it or not, this dried out whiteout is worthless. So I paid $4 for both of these shoe boxes full of stationary stuff. And this is well worth the money that I paid. But then for resale, resale purposes, I suspect these are good. We'll have to look. Um, and then we'll see what the rest of this stuff is. These are replacement uh, erasers for an eraser that I have. So, uh, But I think I put it in the keeps with this extra new old stock eraser refills. Probably not anything worth much, but I think it's stuff that is worth the time it would take to look up. But I have a suspicion. I suspect that these two swing lines, this Nike thing, and maybe this cross pen, but are going to be the things that end up being worth selling and the rest of it won't. But I'm going to, these are the things that are worth looking at. So in some different packaging, this tape sold four for five dollars plus shipping i'll probably just keep it for that so i'm not the only person somebody has this listed and there's only one listed and it's fifty dollars asking um this is embossed this isn't a sticker so it's not fifty dollars but it might be it might be 1250 plus shipping i'll see if there's anything on terapeak so kong's clyde i'm probably going to get some crap for not knowing is tractor equipment that's why all this stuff is on the back being a midwest guy you'd think i would know that but i've never heard of kong's clyde but this ruler is not worth anything surprise 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 uh these pencils i couldn't find anything on them and i'm not gonna waste a bunch of time trying uh this is probably these aren't the same brand script. This is what this goes to. Those aren't the same brand, so they're probably not worth anything. So just what I suspected out of these, they are collectible. There are sold comps, one for 50 cents. That's not worth much. New in package for 10 bucks with a five pack or um, six open for like, ten dollars free shipping so these are good i just didn't get enough of them to make a lot worth selling so all of these things are pretty much the same this cross might almost be worth selling it's probably 10 bucks free shipping but i have no idea how long it's going to take to sell i may lot all of these together but they're kind of all the same thing if you find four or five you find them new in package you're going to do pretty well but just ones i thought with all of those pens there would probably be some good stuff but you know these come in a six pack so if five or six of them were there or multiple packs if this would have been in the box it originally came in any of that and this wasn't much of a gamble so because i knew the stapler was good and i knew it had a brand new roll of packing tape so at four dollars for both boxes i'm not getting hurt and uh figure this stuff out Okay, so I think this is all the stuff that's going to be worth anything out of that. These I'll probably lot together for 25 bucks. This is a little bit of an outlier. I'll see if I can find anybody who's actually sold one. It's not worth $50 plus shipping that the guy on eBay is asking for the only other one available. And then these I'll probably do $10 free shipping. Put them in a padded manila envelope and just prove to myself that they're worth the time it took to do it.